Francisco Diego, who is a lecturer of physics and astronomy at the University College in London. Uh, good to have you on the show. All right, um, let me ask you this, uh, in terms of prestige, uh, because there is, this is an aspect when it comes to, uh, to, to space travel. I think one of the goals for the Russians has to be, look, we can do this mission because uh, there have been numerous failures in the past. Uh, there's an aging space infrastructure which, which the Russians have not fully used in recent years. And obviously, uh, the country has been hit by, by, by sanctions because of the conflict in Ukraine. They want to come out and say, hey, we can still do this. Well, probably part of that, I don't know. But uh, certainly, it is great to see uh, another big player coming to the moon as well with uh, scientific experiments, very simple scientific experiments, but just landing near the south pole of the moon where uh, is very much interest because of the uh, lack of solar radiation in that area and the uh, presence of water that has detected by one of the indian spacecraft some years ago so it's a very important part of the moon to land on and they, in fact they are going to land together the chandrayaan 3 and the luna 25 are going to land almost on the same day very very close to each other only two or three hundred kilometers away from each other if they follow the original landing places in the near the south pole but certainly a bit of science in the in the luna uh, 25 it has about 10 or 15 instruments analyzing the soil analyzing me micrometeorites and even the very thin atmosphere of the of the moon uh, analyzing the plasma uh, there and uh, getting some uh, ideas of how the lunar soil behaves in that part of the of the moon uh, so it is very interesting yeah yeah i mean uh, you you put uh, an important point the indians are also expected to make a a landing in that part of the moon towards the end of the month i think it's the 23rd to 24th of, of august is it because of a, a of a lack of solar radiation which scientists believe there could be a larger concentration of water there well, no, well, not exactly. I mean, the, one of the main problems when you go outside of the uh, radiation protection that we have here on Earth because of our magnetic field, uh, once you go away from that, you are exposed to, uh, to solar radiation and cosmic radiation, which is a major problem for astronauts leaving the low Earth orbit. So um, uh, in those places, the radiation from the sun it not, doesn't come straight, but certainly it will be shaded and uh, 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 but certainly the the the, uh, the fact that there is water there probably related with, to that uh, fact again. But it was detected by the Indian spacecraft, especially for that in the in the sublunar soil, and uh, it is very um, very promising to see all these uh, missions going there. And may I say, I enjoy very much the possibility of. Uh, international collaboration and eventually I would like to see all these different players getting together as humanity to explore the moon and beyond. In terms of the future of space exploration, whether, whether it's just the moon or, or perhaps even, even further, uh, what would this discovery of, of, of water mean? It is very important. Uh, the uh, water has, of course, the obvious uh, advantages of of uh, having that resource on the moon for the survival of the of the of people settling there on the moon, and also you have hydrogen and oxygen that can be split, and then you can produce uh, fuel for further missions going uh, far away. So you have a kind of source of energy there that needs to be uh, exploited, and all these missions essentially are exactly uh, uh, investigating and evaluating the possibility of, uh, of a long-term possibility of exploiting the resources on that part of the moon. Okay. Francisco Diego, thank you very much for joining us here on the news hour. I do enjoy talking to you. Thank you.